Today we're going to be using Scratch to create a public service announcement all about sustainable development goal number 14, Life Below Water. Our animation is going to include a couple different features including multiple scenes and character costumes and interactive features as well. To get started, you're going to want to go to scratch.mit.edu. From here, you can either make an account or sign in with one that you already have, but if you don't plan to save, you can just hit create to get started. If you've signed into your account, Scratch will auto-save as you change things throughout the project. Start by giving the file a name. For this project, we're not going to use the Scratch Cat, so you can go ahead and hit the trash can to get rid of it. Before we get into our animation, we're going to make a bit of a cover page. Start by choosing a sprite that's linked to the theme. So for today, I'm picking the Earth. Next, we're going to make some animated titles. Click on the cat icon to bring in a new sprite, and click on the paintbrush so that you get to draw your own. Add some text. And just like in any other editor, you can make changes to this to make it your own. Change the font, the color, whatever you like. Next thing we're gonna do is make a duplicate of that drawing. This will allow us to make a little bit of changes that we'll be able to change between the different costumes. I'm gonna change the color and add some drawings around it. Again, I'm going to make a duplicate and make some new additions to that third costume. This will act kind of like a stop motion. When I go between the three costumes, it will give the appearance of change. We're going to repeat those steps for the additional text. You can add whatever you like to your own to make this your own. The last thing we're going to do in designing our cover page is to change the background. In the bottom right corner, there's a button that you can press so that you can choose a background from the library. I'm going to choose a galaxy because that works well with the picture of the Earth that I picked. Click on the Backdrops tab so that you can add another backdrop. This will allow us to have two different scenes in our animation. I'm choosing the underwater. With our sprites and our backdrops all picked, we're ready to get started with the coding. Head into the events drawer and pick the when green flag clicked block. Then go into the looks drawer and pull out the one to set the backdrop to the galaxy. Now we need to do a little basic setup for all of our sprites. For each of the sprites, we're gonna drag in two event blocks. Both of them will say when backdrop switches to and we're going to set one of them to say underwater and one of them to say galaxy. For all the sprites we've used so far, we also want to add in a block from the looks category so that it says when the backdrop switches to galaxy, show, and the other block should say when backdrop switches to underwater, hide. Do this for all three sprites. The next feature we're going to be working on is the earth and how it does the zoom in and zoom out code. So with the sprite for the Earth selected, we're first going to tell it that when we first start and we switch to the galaxy, we want the size to be set to 100%. That's what's starting at its normal size. Then we're going to add from the control menu a forever loop with two repeat 10 blocks inside. Then we're going to head to the looks drawer and we're going to find the one that says change size by 10. We're going to put one of those blocks in each of the repeater blocks. The first block is going to make it increase in size by 10. 
The second block, we want to change that 10 to a negative 10 so that it shrinks back down afterwards. And then it will just go between the growth and the shrinking. You can experiment with the block order and those values as well. For the two text sprites that we created, we're actually going to use the same code for each of the sprites. So on the block we've started for when the backdrop switches to Galaxy, we're going to add a forever block. And inside the forever block, also from the control menu, we're going to use the if else block. Head down to sensing and pick the triangular ended block that says touching mouse pointer. Put this on the line for if. After that, we're going to head to the looks block and we're going to grab the one that says switch costume to costume one. And we're going to put three of them in. So you'll set them in order for the first one to be costume one, second one costume two, and the third costume three. Scratch doesn't know to take a break unless we tell it to. So because of that, we have to put in some weight blocks. So head to control and find the one that says wait one second and put a weight between each of those costume changes. One second is pretty long, so you could change it to whatever you like. I went with 0.1 seconds for mine. So we told it what we wanted to do if the mouse pointer is touching the word, but we didn't tell it what to do if the mouse pointer isn't there. So in that else section at the bottom, we're gonna tell it to switch the costume to costume one, which is just the normal costume. Let's give it a try. Hover your mouse over the words and see if it changes. A great time saver in Scratch is that you can take a block from one sprite and just drag it to the other block and it makes a copy for you. Do this now starting at the forever block and drag it to the second sprite that has text. When you click on that sprite, you're gonna have to connect those blocks. So you want to connect it to the one that's set for when the backdrop is switched to Galaxy. We need to create two more sprites that are gonna work really well for our cover page. One button that's going to be a reset button and also one that's learn more, which will change it to the next scene. So from the sprites tab, we're going to pick the paintbrush and we are going to create those two buttons. The first one is for reset. So I can choose any color and background I want. Second sprite we're going to create uh, is to bring us to the next scene. I chose to use the words learn more for my button. Head back over to the code tab and we're going to program the reset button. Grab the event block for when this sprite is clicked and the look for switch backdrop to galaxy. Jump over to the sprite for the learn more button. Here we're going to have three different events. One for when the sprite is clicked and two for its backdrop. We want to set it so that when the sprite is clicked we want it to switch the backdrop to the underwater and we want to set the other blocks so they say when backdrop switches to galaxy, show, and when backdrop switches to underwater, hide. Let's test it out. Go over to your preview panel and try all the features we just made. With our title slide done, now we're ready to start working on our public service announcement. Today's theme is all about sustainable development goal number 14, life below water. So we're going to be using some different underwater characters and objects to make this scene come to life. To get started, we're gonna need some more sprites. So from the sprite menu, let's go and do a search. I'm going to use the starfish character as the main character in my animation. In addition to that, we're gonna make a couple more sprites. This will be the pieces of garbage floating around the ocean. The first one I'm going to design is a piece of netting. So to do that, I'm just gonna draw a line and using my keyboard shortcuts for copy and paste, I'm going to make lots of duplicates of that line to draw a net. And because that net is just floating around in the ocean like garbage, I'm gonna put some holes in it and wrinkle the edges and things like that. The last sprite we're gonna make is another piece of garbage. I'm going to design a tin can that would be in the ocean.
Just like we did for our title slide, we need to tell each sprite when they should show and when they should hide. So we're gonna grab some of those event blocks for when the backdrop switches to galaxy or underwater. But this time, when it's on galaxy, they should hide. And when it's on underwater, they should show. Save yourself some time by dragging those blocks across to each sprite. To code the starfish to be able to move around with the keyboard's arrow keys, we're gonna grab four event blocks for when the spacebar is pressed. We're gonna set them so that one is for up, one is left, one's right, and one's down. We're gonna go to the motions drawer and grab two of the blocks for changing Y by 10 for the up and down, and we're gonna use the change X by 10 for the left and right. Since Going up is 10, that means we have to make down a minus 10. And since right is 10, we have to make the left a minus 10. You can use your keyboard keys now to make sure that it works. I want my sprites to speak out loud in the game. So to do that, I have to enable an extension. Click the extension menu in the bottom left and click text to speech. On the starfish, we're gonna drag in a couple blocks to set the language to English and to set the voice to squeak. To make it so my starfish character will say it with words out loud and also show a speech bubble, I'm going to use the same line of text in a say block that you find from looks and put that same text into the speak box. Now we're gonna add some code to help our net interact with Starfish. On the nets script, we are going to add an event for when the backdrop switches to underwater. And from control, we're gonna add a forever block with an if inside. Go to the sensing drawer and get touching Starfish so that your code will read if touching Starfish. Then from the events block, we're gonna grab the broadcast. You can make the broadcast whatever you want. I called mine pick up net. Then after that, we're gonna add the control to stop. But we don't wanna stop all, we just wanna stop the script. With our net sprite broadcasting a message, now we're gonna go over to Starfish and tell it for the event when I receive pick up net. I'm gonna add a say and a speak line so that he is writing it and saying it out loud. To end this one off, I'm gonna add in the control block to stop the script. That means that this isn't a message that I need the user to see over and over again. They can see it once and it will be done. Because this is all so similar to what we want to happen to the can, I'm gonna take the script from the net and I'm just gonna drag it down to the can so that it has the same thing. All I have to do is change the name of the broadcast message to be something specific for the can. Jump back over to the code for the starfish, and you're gonna to wanna to take the script for the broadcast and duplicate it. Then we're just gonna update the values so that it makes sense for the can. Now we're gonna add some more code in for the net. This is gonna tell the game that if the net is touching the starfish, that the net should glide off to the right and then disappear. So to code that to happen, we need an event block for when the backdrop switches to underwater. We need control blocks for forever and if. We need it to read that if it's touching the starfish, then it will glide to a certain position and then hide. To get the X and the Y variable, if you just drag the net over, underneath the preview panel, it will tell you those coordinates. And then you can just put those into the block.
I want this animation to be consistent every time, so I need to tell Scratch where I want each of the sprites to be as soon as I start. So I'm going to add in some of those position blocks for each of the sprites at the beginning so that it knows where they should be. Since both the net and the can should both glide off the screen if they touch the starfish, I can just take those blocks from the net and drag it over onto the can. Test out your animation and see how it looks. What changes could you make to make it run even more smoothly and share your message in a better way? Customize it by yourself, or if you'd like, I'm going to show a few more additions that you can make to add to your game. Let's go into the net sprite. We're gonna add some more animations to make it give the illusion that it's actually moving around underwater. To do that, we're gonna remove the if block that was telling the net to glide off the screen. We're gonna replace that with an if else block and then reinsert the lines for if touching starfish and the glide. The difference is in what we're going to put inside the else block. We're going to make it look like the net is waving around in the water. So to do this, we're going to add a block that says repeat until touching the starfish. And inside that, we're going to add two more repeat blocks. In each of the repeat blocks, add in a turn and also a change effect block. We're going to update the turns to be only two degrees and we're going to change the effect to the whirl. After that, each of those repeat blocks is going to need a weight. I set mine to just 0.1 seconds. You can play with it to find the one that makes it look more realistic to you. Now I'm going to create a new sprite that will be a garbage can for all the trash to float into before they disappear. Create a new sprite and design your garbage can however you like. To set up the code for the garbage bin, we want to have two different events. One for when the backdrop switches to galaxy, we want the garbage can to hide. And the other, when the backdrop switches to underwater, we want it to show, we want it to go to a position very high on the screen and then wait two seconds before gliding down into place. You might have to adjust some of the glide coordinates to make sure that they land on top of the garbage collection bin before they disappear. The last addition we're going to make to this animation is back on the title screen. I'm going to make a new costume for the Earth that just gives it a funny different look. Back on the code for the Earth, I am going to set it up so that if somebody clicks on the Earth, it will switch to that costume and it will do the same code as before. I hope you had fun today using Scratch to make an animated public service announcement. So get out there and share your brilliant messages.